In this lesson, we will learn how to tune data collector pipelines. This quick video will help you make the most of it. Let's get started. You may know by now that there are several levels of tuning. We can do tuning at the level of a pipeline, a job, or an engine. Talking about tuning at the pipeline level, we've got to mention that origins can be multi-threaded and the number of threads can be configured for many origins. Origin record batch size can be configured for most origins. Batches are processed in memory, and the stream sets data collector memory capacity should be taken into account when setting this property. Notice that pipeline runners are all stages after the origin. Runners process batches in parallel, creating independent threads. The maximum number of runners can be configured at the pipeline level to improve throughput. As for the tuning at the job and engine level, notice that when configuring a job, an advanced option is to set the number of instances of a pipeline. A job can have one instance per execution engine. For example, we have four instances here. If more parallelism and scale is needed, it's possible to duplicate a job and run these jobs in parallel on the same pipeline configuration. In this example, there are eight instances of a pipeline running two jobs with four instances, so it gives us eight in total. And now it's time to tune our data collector pipeline. For the purposes of this lesson, we're going to focus on the tuning at the pipeline level. In the stream sets data collector, most of the origins support multi-threaded pipelines. A greater number of threads can increase the number of records transmitted per second. In other words, records throughput will be enhanced by using multi-threaded origin. If you want to learn more about the topic, proceed to the docs.streamsets.com, move to the data collector section, and find the article about multi-threaded pipelines. There you will find a full list of origins that support the multi-threaded pipelines. Now we are going to recreate a JDBC pipeline we built in one of our previous videos called Build a JDBC Pipeline. You can see that our pipeline is made of an origin and a variety of runners. Take a closer look at them. To begin with, we are using a directory called Zomato Data. This pipeline reads data from a CSV file located in the Zomato folder. As you noticed, the origin is using two threads. Leave it as default by now. Later on, we are going to configure it. Next, we are going to set trash as the destination and name it discard. Then, we want to add more logic to the pipeline. In the CSV file, the rating text field includes reviews about the place. In order to get values that we are interested in, we add a stream selector processor, calling it Select Ratings. If we go ahead and check its configuration, we'll see the condition set before. If the field contains very good and excellent values, we are interested in these. Other records may be sent to the trash. After that, when looking at process data, we can notice that the CSV file field names have spaces in between and the first letters are in uppercase. On the other hand, reviews table pre-built in the MySQL database requires the field names with all lowercase letters and the underscore. So, in order to map the CSV files with the MySQL database, we need to add two more processors, field renamer and field mapper, respectively. Finally, the last part of our pipeline is related to writing into the destination. In our case, we are writing the process data into a MySQL database, which is a JDBC producer. We have set the configuration in the JDBC section below as follows. If you want to get a more detailed description of this pipeline, refer to the Build a JDBC Pipeline video. At the moment, we can leave all other settings as default. Now we are ready to validate and start our pipeline. In the first run, after stopping the pipeline, 
we may check the history details. Keep in mind that our origin is using only two threads. Click on the canvas, go to the test run history in the down left menu, and select the metric summary. Notice that the record throughput is 1490 records per second. Look at the stage batch processing timer graph as well. It will let us know which stage is taking more time. At the first overview, checking the stage batch processing timer may be useful to understand which stage has more cost. In our case, the values are the same. When we use a multi-threaded pipeline, it is important to set the correct number of threads to get better performance. A general recommendation would be to check for the total number of cores working on your machine. We are using the StreamSets Academy Lab environment, so when we type in LSCPU there and hit enter, we can see that there are eight cores and each of them has two threads. And if we multiply these two numbers, we will get the total number of cores, which is equal to 16 in our case. Thus, in the next run, we are going to increase the thread number to 16. Let's start the pipeline and see the results. You should now see that the record throughput is 1,620 records per second, which means that more records are processed at the same time, so the performance is higher. Look at the stage batch processing timer graph. Notice that this value has also increased. We can modify this time indicator as well. Select the origin and go to the batch size. Here we can change the maximum number of records per batch. The recommended value is given by default, it is 1000, but what will happen if we put it up to 2000? Let's run the pipeline and see the result for ourselves. We can notice that the record throughput has remained unchanged, whilst the stage batch processing time has gone up. You probably remember that the default value is 1000, so let's decrease it to 500. The result is, as you might expect, if we decrease the maximum number of records per batch, the stage batch processing time also decreases. Notice that at the same time the record throughput didn't change. All in all, there is no strict codependency between a certain value of record throughput or stage batch processing time and the final result. Moreover, there are some other factors that influence the pipeline performance such as the maximum number of runners or the Java heap size. The latter can be checked at the level of the system configuration, depending on the resource that the data collector uses. If you want to learn more about the Java heap size, move over to docs.streamsets.com, select the data collector section, and go to the article about data collector environment configuration. Notice that the Java heap size determines the heap size allocated to the data collector and affects the amount of memory that the data collector can use when it runs a pipeline. By default, the Java heap size is 1024 megabytes. There you have it. In just a few steps, we can successfully tune a data collector pipeline. Thanks for watching. Now it is your turn to try.